What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out another function of extrude tools. This tool allows you to extrude an edge or multiple edges into a face using a rail to dictate the shape. Today's video is brought to you by Shaper 3D. Shaper 3D is a 3D modeling app specifically designed for use on your iPad with the Apple Pencil. Since SketchUp doesn't currently have a mobile modeling experience, consider checking out Shaper 3D if you're looking for a way to create 3D models on your iPad. It has a modeling interface that's similar to SketchUp's, but it's optimized for mobile. Plus, any model created in Shaper 3D can be exported to SketchUp or other desktop CAD formats. If you're interested in trying Shaper 3D, check it out at thesketchupessentials.com slash Shaper 3D. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, I wanna talk about one of the features of TIG's extrusion tools. So I will link to a video down below um, about all of the tools in general, as well as a link to the download of this extension. So as many of you know, this is a great extension for creating faces or extrusions from edges. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out the first option, which is extrude edges by rails. And so the way that extrude edges by rails works is when it refers to a rail, what it means is the rail is the path that your shape is going to follow. So in the simplest form, if we were to take an arc like this one and extrude it along this rail, we could create a face in that way. So for example, when you first activate the tool, it's going to ask you for a profile curve. The profile curve is the curve that you're going to use in order to create your shape. So it's the shape that's getting extruded. So in this case, this curve. And now it's going to ask for your first rail curve. So we're going to click on this curve. The first rail curve is the curve that this is going to be extruded along. Um, it's going to ask you for a second rail curve, which we'll talk about in a second. If you only have one rail, just click on this same curve again. And then finally, it's going to ask you for a melding profile curve. So the melding profile curve is if you had another curve on the other end here, and you wanted this to move from this shape into that shape, you would select that curve. But in this case, we don't have that, so you're just going to click on this same face again. And it's going to ask you a few things, like if you want to reverse your faces. In this case, I'm going to say yes, because the darker faces are facing up. And it's going to ask if you want these to be quad faces. And if you say yes, then it's going to hide and soften these edges that go diagonally across these faces. And so I usually say yes in this case. Quad faces are usually a lot more stable. Then it's going to ask if you want to erase your original curves. And usually I say no on that one because I like to keep that in case I need to do this again. But you can see how this took this curve and it extruded it along this edge in order to create this face. And so if I move this off, you can see the original, you can see the original edges that we had that created this face. And so now let's take a look at another example. So let's say we did this, but we wanted this to not only follow this curve, but we also had a curve on the other side so that we could dictate the, the shape that this is going to create. So in this case, if we click on extrude edges by rails, we'd select our profile curve, which is this one. We'd select our first rail which is this one, and then we click on this one for our second rail. So that's going to tell this to extrude this using both of these edges. And then we don't have a melding profile, so we would click on this face. You can see how this comes in here and this creates a face using all of these different edges. You can see how it's a very different look than the shape over here. It's going to ask if we want to reverse rail one's direction. We're going to say no. Reverse faces, no. Quad faces, yes. Erase original curves, no. And so you can see how you can use this in order to create a shape like this one. And so now, let's say that we wanted this edge to meld into this shape. So same thing, but now we're going to have a melding profile this time. We'll click on this face, or this, we're going to activate the tool. We'll click on our first profile, rail one, rail two. But this time when it asks for a melding profile curve, we're going to click on this one. And so when we do that, what that's going to do is you can see how in this case this didn't really have any direction on what we wanted it to do so it just kind of made these these arcs that it generated to generate these faces really tall well in this case what this does is this takes this and it averages the dif the difference between this arc and this arc in order to create a completely different kind of face so you can see how this melds from this edge into this edge 
And so one cool thing about this is once you start figuring out the way that this works, you can do some cool things with multiple different curves. But one thing to note is you need to also have another extension, which is called weld. And what weld does is that allows you to take multiple different curves and weld them into a single line. Because right now, if we, if we wanted to take this whole profile and extrude it along this rail, we couldn't do that because these are in here as individual segments. So like for example, if I was to click on this and then select my profile curve, which would be this one, you can see how there's no way to select a second piece for a profile curve. And if you just do this, things get really weird. Um, you don't want to do that. So you can see how that doesn't give you a predictable result. So what you would do instead, in this case, is you would select these two edges, use the extension weld to weld them into a single curve, and then run the tool. Now you can select this curve. You can select your rail, click on your rail again, and then you would click on this face for your melding profile. Um, I'd reverse my faces, yes on quad faces, no on erase original curves. So you can see how you could take this double curving shape and extrude that along this path as well. And one thing to note is if you want these to be smooth faces, you can go into your tray and you can use your soften edges tool in order to soften all those different edges in here to make this one uninterrupted face if that's what you want. In this case, I'm going to leave it as is. And so once you start figuring this out, there's multiple different things you can do with different interesting profiles and rails. So you can see how you can use this to create a double curve. Or you could do something very similar to what we did in our first example using these double curves. So once you have an idea of how the individual edges work and how the rails work, you can create some really interesting shapes. And then the other thing to note when you do this is once you start paying attention to the way that this works, you can actually use your rails to dictate the way your shapes work. So let's say for example I wanted this to turn a corner. Well in this case if I was to weld this and then I was to run this, as you tried to turn the corner you wouldn't get a very good result. Because what this does is this turns the corner and since there's no second rail, this just extrudes this straight along this path. And so what you would want to do instead is you would want to take this shape and you would want to copy it. And you would want to use two rails to generate this result. And so there's probably a little bit of playing around you'd want to do in order to get this to be a smooth transition along this corner. but. You can see how you can start using your rails to dictate these things. And then you can also do interesting things with your different paths and your melding profiles. So in this case, I can have a curved up arc over here, a curved down arc over here, and I can use this curved shape in order to create this fun face. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Do you like this tool? Have you been using extrude tools? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.